Hey, Brittany. Hey. How you doing? Well, how come you're not? All right. How you doing? Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Great. Not bad. How are you doing? Oh, no, not too bad. Could be worse, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's the attitude. <laughs> oh, yeah. I spent the morning in the workshop making closet shelves, so that was pretty good, and I, and I actually finished them. Oh, good for you. I yes. wish I was handy like that. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, yeah, it's a good thing, and it's also not a good thing because your friends make you do all kinds of stuff for them. True. Yeah. <laughs> You're like the go-to handyman in the group. Yes, and in fact, I got to go to my friend Brian's tomorrow and help him get rid of this couch in his old place because I got to cut it up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, so, and I'm the only guy that can seem to do that, so I got to go do that. <laughs> oh, well. Do what you got to do. I do enjoy it out there, though, like, uh, doing that stuff. And, uh, you know, like, I try to use the time as well. Like, I keep a list going of things I'm supposed to do while, I, while I'm doing the woodwork. So it was good. It could be could be worse. It was a nice morning, nice coffee, you know. That's good. I mean, that kind of thing can be relaxing. My dad's retired now down east, just outside of Fredericton. Mm. And he oh, yeah. um, split with his neighbor. They got a, uh, a wood mill. So they've been doing that and he's been having a blast with that. <laughs> oh, that would be so much fun. I don't, I don't know my Arboretum very good. I'm not bad, but I'm not great. But I knew a guy, we used to go up and visit a guy near Bancroft and he had a portable sawmill, a band sawmill. And he had about 200 and some acres of uh, forest. And he was, he was a really cool guy. He was always, he made a bunch of fiddle blanks for a guy in China a whole container load of fiddle blanks what? and the guy came over and he actually made more than that because the guy came over and culled through all of them and like left a whole bunch that he didn't think were good enough and he filled up an entire container and took it back to china that's cool yeah so what is fiddle blank is that the back of the fiddle or the, the back and the front and this and the sides and the neck so the when you see the wood for a fiddle it's really wild actually how you doing elaine Good. 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 Uh, when you see the wood for a fiddle, there's basically three kinds of wood that you're talking about. They got the front, which is spruce, which is the soft wood, and the back, which is maple, and the sides and the neck are also maple. And uh, then the black stuff, all the black stuff is ebony, which is like an African hardwood. And so when you see the blanks for a fiddle, it looks like firewood. So the, the, the maple part is, is a, the biggest chunk because the neck and the sides and the back all come from the uh, same piece of maple. Uh, and it looks like a piece of firewood. It's a, it's a big chunk that's like a wedge shaped. Uh, actually, sometimes, you, sometimes they've been mistaken for a piece of firewood and burned. <laughs> and then other times, my friend Otis, who makes violins out in Cape Breton, he was loading firewood into somebody's house in Cape Breton, and he was like, this is gorgeous wood. And then he actually, he snagged a few pieces and made fiddles out of them, because it basically is this, and the spruce is the same. So if you if you ordered online from a place called Stuart McDonald down in uh, the States, the blanks to make a fiddle, you would get a big wedge of maple and a smaller wedge of spruce and a piece of ebony so that you can make all the, the fingerboard and the pegs out of. See that? Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's really cool. And then the first thing they do is take that piece of maple, just cut a ch cut a chunk off the corner for the neck. See that big chunk off the corner, and then they slice the rest down the middle. Then they slice the sides off of it using like a basically a vegetable peeler for wood, and they slice these really thin pieces off for the sides, and they may they use heat to 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 form those. And then they take the rest and they split it down the middle and it falls like that. And then they work the join and the join is called the book match. Do you see mine? Okay. Yeah. That's, that's the first join that the fiddle maker makes. So he takes that piece of maple that he split down the middle and he makes it really, really tight join. And they, they do candling. So they take a bright light and they put the join in front of the bright light to see if there's any light coming through anywhere. And they keep working it and working it. And sometimes it can take up to a week to get that joint absolutely perfect all the way across. 
and then they glue it together with hide glue, which does not quite require a clamp. Then they do the same thing with the top, with the piece of wood for the top, but that's a little bit less work because it's soft wood. So that, that when they work it together, it's kind of a quicker join. And that's, 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 and then they carve the neck out of the piece of maple. They actually make cuts, remove wood, and then they carve the rest. And then a lot of island makers make their own pegs, so they carve them and their own fingerboard. Fingerboard is a, is a big one. It's kind of, it's a, it's a big part of the fiddle and it's, it's a specific shape. It's not symmetrical. So and yeah, that's what fiddle wood looks like. And I have some. I have blanks for two violins uh, in my shop that I don't think I will ever make. <laughs> One day. One day. I don't quite have all the tools necessary, and I certainly don't have the carving expertise necessary. But, you know, you start things, and you learn it as you go along, and by the end, you have a fiddle, and everybody says, oh, yeah, it looks, it's cool. Yeah, totally. Yeah, looks nice. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, okay, so here we all are. We're gonna play now. Last time we were working on the set, uh, and uh, but then I had an idea for for uh, for this week, right? Can anybody remind me what the homework was? <laughs> I did mention something, like Jake. maybe Jake's. I wasn't here, but we did this. I heard you did the swallowtail and the cash, and then the Irish washwoman with Morrison's. Okay, we'll practice those. That's a great idea. Yeah. We should get a new one at some point. Uh, like, oh, yeah, you were going to do a new one today. Okay, cool. Let's do yeah. it. Yeah. That was the it. other thing. Yeah. So the new one I was thinking of, well, there's a few choices. I want to do a strass bag. <clears throat> and I've been reminded of a few lately. And so I'm going to give you the few choices. And there's also a march. Uh, now, the march is easy, but it's long. Here, I'll start with the march. It's called Balkan Hills. Has anybody ever heard of it? Yes. 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 It's quite a well-known tune. Uh, it's a Highland pipe tune. Uh, and it's an old one. Uh, and it's in the key of D. And it's really easy. It's not hard. It's a, it's a it's a very simple tune. It's one of the first ones people learn, or not the first, but within the first. Let me just check my tune. Yeah. You need to check your sound. Thank you. There we go. Oh my God. It's very well laid out. There's no surprises. There's pretty well the same ending for every part. Uh, lots of repetition, but that's also part of the problem. It's four parts of similarity. Uh, and so it's hard to keep them straight. You know what I mean? However, because of all the other repetition, it's one of these tunes that gives you an opportunity to kind of get into a groove. And if you don't happen to get the right phrase in the right spot every time, it's no big deal. You just keep trying to 
keep it straight, but if you get that groove going, that stress or that march groove going, it can be very good for, for practicing that. Okay, so that's the Balkan Hills. And like I said, that's one of the a very beginning one. I can remember learning it when I was a little fella. Now, uh, this one here is called the Back of the Change House, and it's a Strass Bay. Uh, and uh, it's also very simple and short. <laughs> uh, and it's an old one, 1700s. got his wife again also from the eight, from the 1700s and also like I remember learning this very very well So what do you think? What are your opinions? Oh, I, I was gonna, I was gonna say two or one. <laughs> two or one? Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. You like three? Cameron's got his wife again. I mean, we're gonna learn them all. Uh, Elaine likes one, so that's kind of two people for number one. How about you, Brittany? What's your fave? Uh, any of them. Any of them. Really? You're sitting on the fence on this one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's do number one I mean we're gonna do them all but let's start with number one because it's I think it's really uh, I think it's a good practice tune and it's a definitely a must-have so we'll start with number one and we'll go through them all um, I don't I will see send music it in the Google oh no I'm gonna send it to you now oh, sorry. Okay. no problem I do I just I did make a PDF of it for somebody so just one sec here. Okay. Okay, here we go. So. So you're sending a copy to us uh, via email? I sure am, yes. Okay, I'm going to set up my printer. Okay. Oh my god, my, my N key is not working on my keyboard. It's like it works sometimes. I have to hammer it. <laughs> God. When Jennifer's computer died, uh, MacBook uh, 20, 2019 MacBook actually. It was not, it was a pretty new one, but it just cooked. And so now we have to get a new one. And she's using a keyboard on her iPad right now, which is, that's working out okay. Anyway, I just sent it out. I should upload it to this drive, too, while we're at it. And it's kind of, kind of cool, too, because uh, the way that it's written out is very typical of Highland Pipe music. The one thing I don't like about that is that it's, uh, that it's written out in 16th notes, which is kind of a drag, but it's all right. But it is a good example of Highland Pipe music as you see it. nicely laid out and it's, it's nice that he has the uh 
it's nice that he has the parts labeled so one two three four because like I said it is kind of it is a little bit samey oh I can't upload until oh, Lena has to upload okay that's fine anyway everybody get that file I can also put it up on my screen I'll play it again while you're clicking around there get it rolling around your head got it <laughs> okay uh, so it has kind of a structure and Highland pipe tunes always have this same kind of structure you got the first part and like I said they're labeled there which is nice so you, so you can see clearly for part number one is the main theme and it's this kind of D major thing where you go F sharp to A the basis for like the whole tune okay so that's the main theme of the tune and you're gonna see that the you know the middle phrase is similar in the other parts and the ending is the same and then the second part is what I call the high part so it kind of it stays up high for that whole beginning phrase instead of going down to the A string uh, so that's number two uh, and it also, number two, has a, a long first and second ending. You can see that. So in the first ending, it kind of does the first phrase again. In the second ending, it does something different. Okay? It's kind of more like the second line of the tune. Uh, and it's a long second ending. Part three is what I call the long D. And they always do this, the Highland Pipers. <laughs> See that? The big long D. And the rest is the same. And then we got the fourth part. And the fourth part in Highland Pipe music is always the complicated part. The syncopated part. The rhythmic part. Because the poor things, they only have nine notes. So all they can do is vary things rhythmically. And they certainly do. This is no, no different and so typical. Same sort 
of structure as part two with the first ending and the second ending there. So do you see how all that works? Gotta love it. Gotta love Highland Pipe music. Uh, I love how the part's going along. It's really great. So let's take some time. First of all, we're in the key of D. So let's practice a D major scale. Uh, get her nice and solid. And then we're going to take some time with the first part. Because like I said, the first part is really the, the basis for the whole melody. I'm going to get my tuner out and try to be a perfectionist about tuning. <laughs> scale nice and easy and really nicely in tune <laughs> ready two three go Pretty nice. I did pretty good. Let's do it again right away. We'll do it same speed, and then we'll do it faster, and then we'll start working on the tune. Same speed. Ready, two, three, go. Okay, let's speed it up. One, two, three, go. was not absolutely perfect but the scale was pretty good how did you guys do with the speed still good I'm struggling with the arpeggio in what way are you flat or sharp um, I'm just like not getting the notes okay so we got low A we got D got F sharp so that's the D2 Okay, then we got open A, and then we got D, which is the third finger. Okay, and then another F sharp, that's E1, and then the high A, so that's the three. Okay, we come down the same way, three, 
One. A3. Open. D2. Open. And G1. Now, does that make sense? Now, one way to think about it is on the lower octave, like you got the one down here, but then we got open, two, open, three, one, three. See that? Odds and even, or evens and odds. So even numbered, open, two, open, and then odd numbers, three, one, three. Okay? That's the way I do it because I can't, I'm very bad at math. It was, my boy is getting tutored for math right now. Uh, he, he's a, the tutor is a friend of ours. And I'm sitting there eating supper, listening to him get tutored with pi and and uh, circumference of circles and radius and stuff. And I just get like triggered in high school because I did honors math in high school because my parents had this idea I was going to be an engineer. And, and I just struggled, man, and I sweated. And I went and worked with my sister because my sister went back to high school at the age of 27 to improve her mar marks. So she could go get into a science program, which she did, and now she's an anesthetist. Uh, so it was great with me for me because I would go over to her house and we would work on the math together, like every night. Uh, and I had a tutor, and I made 53. 53, 53. I could not get past 53. And it's only because I didn't practice the work, you know, getting, like, going through all the steps. Because it was just, I found it really, algebra really easy, and I just read Western novels and wrote down the answer and couldn't understand why people were giving me a hard time and uh, and then I got to you know I could never I could just never finish the exams so Jerome's good at math very good at math but he has trouble with that aspect as well especially the practice so this guy coming over once a week helps him to practice all that and it's really it's really helping but it's not helping me it's put me right back there and I'll, I'll never forget when my teacher let me cheat because he was a great guy. He was a really, really good teacher. And it was the very final exam. And he knew how hard I was working at it. And I couldn't remember a formula. And I knew that my book was in my locker just outside the room. And I went up to him and I said, can I use the, wa the washroom? And he looked at me and he said, yep. <laughs> and I went out and I looked at that formula and I went right back in. He knew what I did, but I think he let me. And, uh, and then when I went to see if I graduated, it was touch and go. But I did graduate, thank Christ. My God. Okay, another quick one. Lock it in. A one, two, three, go. saw your fingers were more sure of themselves it's great okay so now the Balkan Hills I think it's called that because the army unit probably went to the Balkan Hills doing something not hard we start with this kind of, it's it, there's a pickup so that's the a to the g okay and then we got f to a and then f to e and then a big d and a big a okay so that that phrase sounds like this okay and then in the next bit we have B to G, so one to three. See that? And the way that I do that is to roll my finger over between the two strings, the third finger. See that? So I don't have to pick it up, because picking it up is a lot of work. So that whole phrase sounds like this. And you 
see in the second half, it goes short, long. Okay? So it's long, short, long, short, long, long, short, long, long, short, long. <laughs> it's like, like Scottish rapping. Anyway, shall we give it a try? Okay. One, two, three. Let's do that again. Same thing. One, two, three. Do it again. Same thing. Ready, two, three. Okay, is that getting in there? Good. Second phrase. So we got a D to the E. And then we do this kind of third finger thing. Down the scale. And then a big F and a big E. So. Let's give that a try. Okay. So this is starting the end of the second bar. D to the E in an up bow. One, two, three. Do that again. Same thing. Ready, two, three. And this is a highly repeated part of the tune, guys. It's good to get this lick really, really well. Let's do it again. One, two, three. Last time I swear. One, two, three. Are we getting that? Yeah? Cool. So let's try now the whole first line. Let's see what happens here. let's keep going because you might notice that the first two bars of the next line are exactly the same as the first two bars of the previous line exactly the same okay so let's see if we can get as far as the ending now the ending has a little really cool tricky thing in it so we'll take that on its own but let's start at the top and see if we can get through to the ending Heather's writing in fingers. I can tell. <laughs> and it's a good thing to do, especially when you're learning to read. Writing in the fingers, you, like it, help, it spurs things along. Okay, one, two, three. up D to the E and then we got this cool thing 
See that G sharp there? So I'm going to play, instead of a low two, I'm playing a high two there. And then, for the next note, do you see that little weird looking sharps, incomplete sharp sign? That's called a natural sign. And so that means you got to drag the two back to the low position. And it's so cool to have them side by side. It's, it's the same if you, you might take a look at the music now and you'll see that it's the same ending for every part so we have to get good at this move <laughs> Dan? yes that's all single bowing yes ignore the uh the bowing that's written in there yeah i mean you can do it if you want to it's fine it's fine but i'm i single bow it okay now let's see if we can get it so let's not bother with the pickup because we already know the pickup. So let's start on the long F in the beginning of the second last bar of the second line. So if the whole phrase again sounds like this. Okay, let's give it a try. One, two, three, go. Let's do it with the pickup. Let's try that again. Is that working? Excellent. Very good. So now we're going to try the whole first part. And then it'll go quick because, like I said, there's so much repetition. Once we get this first part, We'll go flying through the next bunch of parts. All right. Here we go. One, two, three. This move that we already know from the first part. That little move where we roll a finger over there. So it starts with that. But then the next part is the same as the first part. See that? And then you, you do this again. And then the same ending. So really, by rights, we already know this part. So let's see if we can kind of put it together, but let's do it phrase by phrase. So let's play the first phrase. Do 
just that and slow a one two three sitting. You get the idea? Let's try one more. One, two, three. Okay, that looked good. Now, let's play the next phrase. One, two, three. one thing which is interesting I didn't notice before <laughs> um, the uh, if you compare the pickup note for the second phrase in the first part and in the second part now that would be I'm talking about the second bar of each part in the first part the pickup is D to the E in the second part the pickup is F to the G see that so that's something to keep in mind Anyway, let's give it another try. Nice and slow. with this um, rhythm where there's uh, a G sharp. Yep, that's and, just a short sandwich. But isn't it supposed to be the same rhythm as the second half of that bar with the G sharp? Yep, absolutely. It just looks weird. But it sounded differently when you were playing it. I guess yeah. when it goes faster, it sounds a little bit better. That's right. The, the dotted rhythms are really hard when you go slow. Okay. All right. Yeah. It'll take shape, but you're right. That it, and it's good to point out because it looks weird. Like they have the short notes all the way over to the right. Yeah. So it, makes, it makes you think it's different, but it's not. It's still just an eighth, two, two thirty seconds. Yeah. You know, a dotted, dotted 16, two thirty seconds, dotted 16. Same as the following four notes. Okay. Okay. Good to clarify. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Let's try that now. Oh, okay. So now let's try. Oh, anybody else have a problem? I just got a little lost. I wasn't sure where we started, so I got confused. <laughs> okay. We're starting where it says number two. Just two. Okay. Thanks. Sorry. Third line. Third line. Let's just try it again. 
and we'll go slow. Third line, part two. One, two, three. successful look good <laughs> yes thank you Sorry. okay no problem <laughs> now let's take a look at the second ending of that part so that's all it is it's it's like it's like a combination of the first line and the second line okay so let's see if we can play that this is the second ending being the one, two, three, four, fifth line. One, two, three. breather think about something else for a second because we're going to try all of part two and like i said this tune can get befuddling because of all the rep repetition all right i was tuning there earlier and the with chris lang and weekend was on the weekend it's the piping weekend here in toronto and it was excellent and the piper that they had from waterford in ireland was so good he was just excellent but it was funny because when he was doing the concert he said I'm going to play this set of tunes, and it comes from here, and it comes from whatever. And then he said, and just give me a little, just I got a tune for just a second. And he started tuning, and the next thing you know, he's taking apart his pipes. <laughs> he's got the, the main stock off, and he's got the reed out, and he's going, Rrr. and it, it finally, it took about, I don't know, probably about 12 minutes. Finally got her all back together, and yes, it was slightly more in tune. Than when he took it apart. <laughs> That's papers for you. Okay, let's do it. The whole part two. Okay, a uh, one, two, three.
looking good, everybody. Cool. Okay. Now, the third part is what I call the long D. And that's what it is. So you do a little, uh, an A and a B pickup note, and then you play this big long D, and you just go up the scale and down again. And then the rest, we know. So it goes like this. That's it. And then the rest is all the same as what we already know. So let's practice that first phrase with the long D, and then we'll play the whole part. So A, B, D. One, two, three. Do that again, same thing. One, two, three. One more time. One, two, three. Okay, so now let's try that and just keep going. I think you can, you can uh, follow along and you'll recognize everything. One, two, three. feeling good you got the long D great then we got the syncopated part so the complicated part it's not really that hard but it is busy that's the main thing the rest of we all we already know then we got to do it again we know so it's basically again just those first two bars but it's busy so we'll do it a few times okay and I love the move that's kind of another roll over there and then we got right from the open A I love that and then we got this one again which we've already done so let's give that a try three to three and we'll do the pickup notes, the F and the G there. One, two, three. See how that works. 
mark, see? Nice part, love it. Let's try that one more time. We'll go right through to the end of the first ending, and then we'll figure out the second ending, and then you guys will be the masters of the Balkan Hills. Well, we'll play it a few hundred times. Anyway, try number four right until the end of the first ending. One, two, slow. Shake your shoulders out, take a breather. We're gonna try the whole thing. The whole Balkan Hills. Wonder what they were doing with the Balkan Hills. We, Canada's been involved in the Balkan Hills a lot over the centuries, decades, I guess. We're not really a century, we're just over a century old. I guess Britain has been there a lot. Um, Dan, I'm just a little bit confused about uh, the fourth part, how we're going to do the bowing. Um, in the first bar, yeah. is, it, is it just going to be down, up, down, up? Yep. It's just, uh, just straight bow the whole thing. <laughs> they got to do that little up, up. Do you see that little up, up that's in there? Yeah. Okay, that's but the and then your fingering is just a little bit odd as well. Going from one string to another string on the left hand. Yeah. Anyways, it's hard. <laughs> that's a that's a it's a hard move, but it's a very good move to get. See, that's called a fifth when you put one finger down on the two strings. See that, and it's a really good move to get because a lot of tunes do a lot of that. You know, and then it takes a lot of work out of it. So, okay. this is a really good opportunity to practice that rollover. All right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, straight bowing. You know, to tell you the truth, I was saying ignore the bowing, but a lot of the bowing in here is good. Some of it's not necessary, but it, all the up ups are where they should be. Now, the only thing that would cause you a problem is when you come back around to repeat. Okay? Because you see how you end up, but the pickup notes are up. You have two options there. You can either. I, I found myself doing both. You can either do your up bow and then just leave room for the pickup notes like this. It's very simple and it's also a bit of a skill. Not one I use a huge amount, but I do use it. Okay, that's the stop and keep going. And then the other method is to just do when, when you come back around to repeat the part, you single bow the pickup notes. Okay, so that looks like this. Oh, uh, whoops. Whoops. <laughs> See that? It puts you right back on track. So I, I like the stop and keep going method a little bit better. 
is I find it gives you that kind of up breath. And that, the thing about a Strass Bay, if you've ever seen the dance, it's a very a Highland dance. It's very much the up before the down. See that? They have these long like and then they land. And so it's that and the tune is like that as well. It's all about the see that? And so those up bows are useful with that. You see what I mean? That's why I think it might be a good idea. So experiment, see what you want to do. And otherwise, let's uh, let's have a crack at her. It's interesting, my hand's a little crampy. I've started with electrolytes. Jennifer bought them. They're tablets that you put in water. And I'm going to see if I can get rid of the... the I can't get cramps like you wouldn't believe, especially my legs. After a long gig, I go to bed and Jennifer says that my right leg keeps stomping. Like half the night. Like a dog or something like that. And I, then it may, I end up getting really bad cramps. But I, with my left hand I get cramps. But I like today I didn't do any playing at all. I had the day off. And so I was just working out in the workshop. But as soon as I pick up the fiddle and I have the day off, I start playing. And it's been about an hour and I'm starting to get a little bit crampy in the hand. See that? If I've, I noticed that if you use it, it's, it's much better than if you kind of don't use it and just pick it up. You know what I mean? Very interesting. Anyway, I've distracted you enough. Let's do it. A one, two, three.
You get through it? Any questions or problems? Part four is definitely more challenging, for sure. Absolutely, yes. And that's why you have three parts to warm up to it. <laughs> get you used to the idea. Now, do you think we could try? Because that was a plod. That was like a very slow tempo. Uh, and uh, it, it makes it harder sometimes, especially with the repetitive tunes, to go so slow. So can we pick it up a little tiny bit? I think we could. I think it would actually help. Let's do it. Shoulder rest is bothering me. Just give me a sec to adjust it. Yeah, it's too too wide on the one side. That should do it. Much better. Kinda. <laughs> Never satisfied with these things. These damn shoulder rests. That'll do. I wish, I wish I didn't need to use them, but I have no other choice. Here we go. So the tempo is going to be more like... One, two, three.
Anybody got an arm left? <laughs> it's a long one. That's the other thing. You see, they don't have a bow arm to deal with. They have a continuous supply of air, those pipers. Like, they could just keep blowing and blowing and blowing. They don't care. They don't have an arm to deal with, you know? Anyway, everybody getting all that? I'll leave it with you because it's a bite to chew. Although it's only a few phrases, to keep it all straight is going to be a challenge. And it's on the, I, th I think it's on the YouTube channel. I'll make sure. I'll make a video right after. And I'll do it two speeds. I'll do it kind of the slower one, and I'll do it what we just did. Okay? So you can go back and forth and see what works. Now, why don't we do this? Before we're done, why don't we practice one of those sets of jigs? Let's see. Let's do the one with the, uh, with the Morrisons. So that's Morrisons and the Kesh, is it? Keshi Kesh? We had uh, the Irish washerwoman, we had Kesh, we had Morrisons, and we had uh, Swallowtail. Morrisons and Swallowtail, let's do that. Big okay. Big minor special. So it's Morrison's first, eh? And then the swallowtail. That's nice. It'll be good. Sets. Let's see if I can pull it up here. Okay. Okay, so we got so we're doing Morrison's followed by the swallow tail. I think. That'll do. Okay. That's not I don't have that in the set. I have what I have is Irish Washerwoman and Morrison's. Does everybody have that? Irish Washerwoman and Morrison's? Let's do that. I, we were talking about that roll over three thing. Irish washerwoman is really good practice for that. So let's do that. Irish washerwoman followed by Morrison's. Oh, I see. Option to add swallowtail. Yes, always an option. <laughs> See what goes wrong or doesn't go wrong. <laughs> Maybe nothing will go wrong. Okay, we'll take her nice and easy. One, two, three.
everybody's bows were moving along just fine there, I thought. Seemed to be going okay. Anybody have any problems outstanding? Well, I haven't played um, the second one, Morrison's Jig, so I struggled with the first line. Oh, yeah? Let's see it. The first line. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's so it's kind of a melodic syncopation, okay? It makes it sound syncopated, but it's not. But one way to keep it straight is you got the long D1, and then you got one round of A1, D1, A1, and then you do a round of D1, A1, D1. Okay. Okay, that could help. <laughs> And then it's a big open A after that. Like, as soon as you fin finish that second round, big open A after that. Okay? Yeah, that's a hard, It's that's the hardest part of the tune for sure. Anybody else having any problems with that before we try it again? I was the same as Brittany there. The rhythm just sounded totally different. Like, maybe it's been a while, but the, yeah. the first... Uh, well, the first line. The I first wasn't getting the Morrison's. rhythm at all. Okay. Let's do that together real slow. The first line of Morrison's. It'll help everybody. And you, like I said, I think I was saying this before. Just play everything that's there. There's no weird rhythms. It's just longs and shorts. So long, short, 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 long, short, 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 short. That's all it is. Nothing weird. Actually, it's the same thing the whole time. Long and then three triplets. Let's give it a try. Nice and slow. Ready, go. Shall we try the whole thing again? Can I ask a question? Oh, yeah. you, yes, yes, um, yes. I have markings on um, that are sort of crossing the bar lines. You mean the slurs? Yeah. They are fun to do. Now, they're not necessary slurs. Like, they don't, they're not, you know, correcting your bowing or anything like that. They're just really fun. I'll show you what it sounds like. that cool so they call yeah. that an over the bar line slur and it's a very irish thing it should be on an up bow okay and there's is there a, there's a pause in between there just a me tiny... you could you could see that little move and i do it all the time i hang out way too much with irish people so i do that all the time that little over the bar line up bow. It's kind of like a woo. It's like an extended pickup. A good question. So you don't need to do them, but if you wanted to try it, it's usually an up bow. Okay. Okay. So if you get to one of those slurs and you're going up, you can have a try at it. Okay. Okay. Good question. Let's try her one more time. Irish washerwoman followed by Morrison's. I don't know why I'm reading it. I don't need to read. These. I, I just get worried that I, uh, I'll start improvising. Okay, here we go. Ready, go.
people. How did you do that time around? Is it okay? Great. Cool. So it'd be good to get them faster, but for now, get them stronger. <laughs> and we'll work on the speed. And then we got the new tune. Okay? So that's excellent. So we'll see you guys next Thursday. Have a good week. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.